I'm third generation born in, born in Lodi, so my children, my children are fourth generation. I really think that we have a responsibility, not only to our, our fourth generation and maybe their own children, but other people who aren't even related to my family. I think it's my responsibility to make sure that it's transferred in, in better shape than when I, when I got it. And the only way it will be better shape is if we learn and we continue to, to gather knowledge and, and we move forward. How's it looking? Well, we like the looks of things. We ought to get it in the same row so we can <laughs> at least get together to. and talk about yeah. this. I'd, like, I'd really like to take you down into the vineyard and, and show you the northeast corner of this, of this particular block. And also, I'd like to go through the swale to show you there at the bottom of the swale what the, what the vineyard looks like. Well, that's a bit far to walk. <laughs> we could take my outfit right here. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll, I'll drive slow enough. You think we can fit all in this? The best fertilizer in a vineyard is the farmer's footsteps. And, and in our case, it's not footsteps, it's tire marks, but it's ATV tire marks. We spend a tremendous amount of time in the vineyards just looking at them and assessing what's going on uh, in the vineyard. Uh, and that is probably the key to what I believe is, is uh, a sustainable system as you become involved with the system. I think people don't realize how important Lodi is to the wine uh, uh, industry. You know, Lodi grows as many wine grapes as the rest of the North Coast, uh, Napa, Sonoma, uh, Mendocino combined. And, and we really are the heart of the industry. We're carrying the, the real, we're propping up the industry in terms of our winemaking. And, uh, and I think we're going to take it, uh, we're taking it to another quantum level. One of the things that I'm proudest about about Lodi is that as a group, we all work together. We really all go to the same stores, the same restaurants, the same movies, everything else. So we see each other every day. And I think we had that spirit of all working together. But I think one of the most unique things was that we all agreed that by some date, we will all be in this sustainable agriculture. I don't think there's any other place in the world where all the growers of a single item have come together and said, we all want to be sustainable. And it's a big group. It's, what are we, 600, 700 growers? Yeah. Growers, yeah. I mean, sustainable agriculture had no textbook. You know, even at Davis at the time, at the University of California, they didn't have a textbook. They didn't even have anything about that. I think it's a mind shift. Uh, I mean, I think the first step to sustainable uh, agriculture is to uh, realize that there are other ways to look at the way you practice your business. Everything that I look at, I think, is this a, is this a sustainable practice? And that doesn't necessarily mean just uh, uh, the, the, the chemicals that you use in a vineyard. That means, is it sustainable for employees to work in my vineyard? Is it sustainable for water sustainability? Is it sustainable for me to stay in the business and profitable so that I can stay in the business? It really is a definition of A to Z. It's not, it's not a narrow window. The great examples are around us of our sustainability. Uh, at the cover crops, uh, uh, no-till, uh, uh, where we, we mow cover crops a couple times a year. We don't have to clean till or cultivate our soils. We're not throwing dust up in the air. Uh, it's far less uh, of an impact uh, for air quality. Uh, it, looking at the vines, uh, all this is being irrigated by drip irrigation systems. Drip, drip irrigation allows us to, to give measured amounts of water to the vine and, and distribute it throughout the irrigation system uniformly so that one vine will get the same as the next vine as opposed to uh, you know, a flooding an area and, and the front of the row will get the, the most water, the back of the row will get the most water and the middles probably won't. So we use our water more efficiently. That's a, definitely a, an advantage to be able to do what we, what we do here. Nine times out of ten we let Mother Nature take care of it. With the cover crop a lot of the beneficials will come up, take care of some of these problems. Uh, a good delta breeze like behind us in a warm day is probably the best cure for a lot of our, our fungal diseases. We're sitting in a vineyard right now that um, if my father was farming it at the time it would look completely different than it does today. And the, and the changes that are in the vineyard today not only affect the quality of the wine but it affects the quality of the environment that we're growing the wine in. And so we're, we're seeing uh, it, different trellis systems, we're seeing different irrigation systems, we're seeing cover crops, we're, we're, we are really practicing a, a, a saying that we like to live by is less is more. We live in the vineyard. Uh, you and I, and we all live in the same Absolutely. vineyard. And so, you know, when our wives and our children are playing in the vineyard, you want them safe. And so I think part of it is just that whole concept of, you know, keeping things 
and a, and a sense of balance. And I think sustainability is that sense of balance. Lodi's home, Lodi's family, Lodi's roots, and Lodi's the best place that you can possibly buy a bottle of wine from. Livable, lovable Lodi.